Question 22 begins with a velocity time graph for a skydiver falling vertically uh, through the air. Ask us how we could use the figure to determine the acceleration of the skydiver and describe how this acceleration varies with time. Well, from a velocity time graph, we can use uh, the gradient is equal to the acceleration because the gradient represents the rate of change of velocity. And we can see from this graph, the gradient is getting shallower. So the acceleration is decreasing. Part B gives us uh, an experiment with a, car, a toy car on a ramp. And the experiment is aiming to determine how the kinetic energy of the car varies with distance from the top of the ramp. So you have to design an experiment to determine this, uh, paying attention to how the apparatus is used, what measurements are taken, and how the data will be analysed. It is very important in questions like this that you address all of those suggested bullet points. So there are a few different ways you could do this. Personally, I would use a light gate. So light gate and data logger are used to measure the time. taken for the car to pass. Use a ruler to measure the length of the car. Or perhaps you could add a, an interrupt card to the car if, it, if the shape wasn't suitable. Measure the length of that instead. Use V equals length divided by time. So speed is distance over time. Well, the distance here is the length to determine the speed. Measure the mass using scales. So that's the mass of the car. Finally, use Ke, kinetic energy equals half mv squared to determine the kinetic energy. Part C shows us this toy car. Uh, it's being released from rest from the top of the ramp and we have graphs representing the potential energy of the car decreasing and the kinetic energy of the car increasing. It travels a total of 90 centimetres along the ramp. So you can see that here at D is 0 0.9. That's the end of the journey. There's no more potential energy. The first part asks us why the uh, kinetic energy against D graph is not linear. This is because friction uh, and drag are doing work against the car's motion. So we have gravitational potential energy being converted into heat and kinetic energy. Not all of the GPE is being converted to kinetic energy. CII asks us to determine the average resistive force acting on the toy car. Now, to do this, we need to work out the difference between the energy that the car has at the start, the potential energy, and the energy that the car has at the end, the kinetic energy. So the potential energy here is 0 0.5 joules, and the final kinetic energy is 0 0.36 joules. So therefore the work done by friction is equal to 0 0.5 minus 0 0.36, which is 0 0.14 joules. Now that gives us the work done by the force. We need to find out what that force is. So we, to do that, we could rearrange our equation W equals fx work done is equal to force multiplied by the distance moved in the direction of the force to get f equals w divided by x. w is 0 0.14. x here is the, the distance moved, which is 0 
giving us an average frictional force of 0 0.156 newtons. Thank you for watching this video from Cowan Physics. If you found it useful, please like, subscribe and visit cowanphysics.com.